don't need those. I've got plenty of tape. If we make posters, we can just hang them up. So I know some people are making club posters and different stuff. My thought was going to be we could make some math posters showing the tile representations and whatever else. And one day we talked about how you could make your tile pattern look like a robot, stuff like that. But if we're super jazzed up about Desmos and the fact that it's a Friday, whatever else, like we could pivot and we could do Desmos today. But let's talk about where we're going from here. The review, sorry, Max, go ahead. The converted miles is what we were looking at. Was the so you had to have like how you got the yeah you need your conversion factor written down as well so I know what math you did. Colin. Yeah, that's it. We haven't met yet. Like our staff meetings after school. So if you gave stuff to other teachers, they'll probably give it to me after school today. Yeah, we'll probably leave this open to an option. That's. That's a good idea for people that may not like be so jazzed up about Desmos. Max. Um, there is a math thing that I don't want to do because I don't want to do for a while. It's not like a game game. It's not like actually. You got to talk to me outside of class if you're going to pitch me something I haven't seen before. But let's talk outside of class, okay? Or here in a couple minutes once I get us rolling, okay? Oh, yeah, my bad. That the bin is sitting over here. So. We shut that door too. Monday. I might as well show you guys my plan book so you know this. Well, it's written in pencil, though. So you don't know how legit it is since it's written in pencil. Monday, I have planned out that we will be playing a Jenga review game because Tuesday we will be taking, at least starting, your Chapter 4 Mastery. The main reason this cannot move is I'm out on Tuesday. I have a couple doctor's appointments, so I need to take the day. Um, it just can't work out, like, Sometimes we try to squeeze in appointments in between teaching classes, and like this year, my schedule just does not work for that. Um, so Tuesday is your chapter four mastery. On Monday, the review game that we play is going to cover the questions from the closure. So if you want to get a jump start on those, I did, have I given you the closure? I'm not even sure. Yeah, but four one seven is not the closure. The closure is the closure. Oh, it's with 417? So, here's, here's what I'm really saying. 417 could either be your homework for the weekend. So, if you are a person that does work on the weekend, like you use your Saturday morning to do some schoolwork, you could go ahead and get it done. But if you don't, then it's going to be Monday's homework when we just have the review game in class. Okay, so this is one of those, like, you're in charge of your life. You decide when you do it, but it's going to be due next week, probably like Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know. I won't be here Tuesday, so I don't really care if people turn it in Tuesday. Um, does that make sense? So for all of you saying, is 417 tonight's homework? Uh, it's, I mean, it can be. Sure. If you want it to be. Yeah, probably Monday. Let's go ahead and say 415, 416 due Monday, just because they should be done. So 415... 416. So, um, just as beneficial as making posters, because actually making posters would uh, just review what we already know, the next activity that I would have us doing in Desmos is called Match My Line, where it takes us a little bit further than you just being able to do whatever you want with the line and just try to hit the stars. Now we really actually have to hit the points. So if we want to try, go ahead and pull out your Chromebooks, if we want to try this for like five, 10 minutes and then see how we think about it. Wait, can I um, review it and have them not? Nah, I think I am going to have all of us at least start this. And then I might offer up that we can pivot uh, afterwards. Yeah, I don't care what I maybe said in the past. What I'm asking you to do right now is pull out a Chromebook.
So those of you that are trying to sneak your way into marble slides, uh, I have paused that activity, so sneaking your way into marble slides will not work. When you log into Desmos, so if you just go to student.desmos.com like we did yesterday, so student.desmos.com, you just log in with Google, right? So as soon as you start typing student, it should pop up since you typed it in yesterday. If I spell things right, if I spell things right, can you what? Oh yeah, you can go ahead and get in. So sign in with Google. I mean, we'll use Desmos every chapter now. Like, I really like Desmos, and I think some of you like it now after yesterday. So, one of the reasons that I decided for us to come back to Desmos was a couple questions that kids brought me after class. So if I go to the Desmos graphing calculator, we can have these conversations uh, without me giving away what to do on your activity. So a few of us figured out that to make a horizontal line, and I know a lot of us are still logging in, that's fine. To make a horizontal line, how could I type in an equation that just makes my line stay the same all the way across? Max? That's almost vertical. So when, when people were typing in like that, that made almost vertical. Remember, horizontal goes with the horizon. If you look out like on a far distance, the horizon is as far as you can see. So the horizontal, so that's, but that's not vertical. That's almost vertical. So we'll come back to vertical line. But if I want a horizontal line, anyone got ideas for me? Max? I mean, it could be a negative, but like what? What if I just do like negative nine? Guys, if you are looking at the login screen, click login with Google. I see some people waiting to log in. So wait a minute. Y equals Y? Just Y? Nothing happens. Guys, let's review what we're actually talking about. When we go and graph this, right, we've been talking about rules and tiles and, and stuff like that, but that's all to get us to our final destination of understanding that the Y the output, the number of tiles, is a function. The y, the y is a function relating to x. You could flip it around and say x is a function relating to y. You could say purple is a function relating to cactus. It doesn't matter. We just use y and x because it makes things easier. When you say y is 2x, you're saying the value of y is double that the value of x. But if I just say y is 2, or, or in my case, like if I say y is 32, because I'm talking about my age, this year, it doesn't change. Well, it kind of does. We're all getting slightly older. But when you say y is just a number, so like y is 5, it just puts a line straight, horizontal, across everywhere that y is 5. So I want you to take that idea as you work through this activity. If y equals a number is how we do a horizontal, I'm curious how we might be able to actually do a vertical. Because we said like 9999x, like that's not actually vertical. It just looks like it. It's really steep. Right, 99x doesn't look quite as steep. 999x looks even more steep. But it's still not actually vertical. What if you put a thousand? Still not actually vertical. Because then you're just saying your y value is a thousand times your x value. It's not actually vertical. What if you put the y equals zero? Because y is not a number. Match my line is what we're looking at. Probably make us go in order. Hang on just a second, I'll be right back here. 
So I should probably turn on some pacing. So let's pace for the first like three or four. Guys, remember, there's no risk here. Just try stuff. Uh, Alright, I just added one. So, on our first slide here, let's go ahead and come together on this. Ooh, I should anonymize. So I can show the overlay of what everybody's trying. But guys, check it out. Check it out. Some people solved it in different ways. Right? Some people stayed going through the origin and were able to get through this point. But some people moved the line all together and it starts at a different spot. Interesting. So there are multiple ways to solve these puzzles. But if you have not solved challenge one yet, it looks like what we can see from our, uh, our anonymized people here is this line, because it's super dark, means a lot of people have that answer. 0.5x or 1 half x. But uh, Terrence Tao, if you change your y-intercept, you can leave your slope alone, right? So they changed their y-intercept, left their slope alone, and found a way to hit that point. Interesting. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you can see who you are. And then you can Google that name if you want to learn about a famous mathematician, because they are all famous mathematicians. Who is person? What a question.
You guys are more than welcome to help each other at your group if someone is struggling. Oh, I do got people. There you go. Unpaste. I'll let you guys move on. I've opened up the gate to Desmo, so now they like only want to do Desmo. No, Desmo, I want to do Coach Taylor. Coach Taylor. Desmo's the white one. Yeah. Oh. Well, Coach Taylor might be my white one. Three white stuff in one corner, and then the water in the back there. Maybe the one We still need to have some negotiations, but I can't have a week lapse. But we do need to talk about the whole five-day thing, because it's not actually five days a week. It's only four days a week. Because we don't have it on Friday. But you insinuated that you miss a day. Like, where you... Right. But in general, we only ever have four days for you to possibly do it. Brenda and I are in, in tough negotiations about her payment for doing attendance for me. Well, I asked last Tuesday, mm. and I don't get to finish it that day, so it's going to be attendance for that Friday. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying it's a variable rate yes. at, like, one candy per day? Yes. I think it's a variable rate. So what you're saying is if you do this for no days – hold on, sit down for a second. So if you do this for no days, you get no pieces of candy. So what you're saying is the amount of candy, if we call candy the Y value, the, the output, the output of the output of Brenda's equation or function, if we say that, should Y just equal four? No, because Brenda's not only gonna get four pieces of candy ever, she's asking you to get four pieces of candy every week. So so Brenda's, Brenda's output of candy, because she is my secretary, essentially, and takes attendance every morning, their output of candy is always going to be four times whatever the input is. So if I make my x equal one and look at that intersection point for one week, Brenda's going to have four pieces of candy. If I make my x equal to two, and really we could say my x's are my, my w, right, like my weeks. So what Brenda has set up in this negotiation letter that she oh so slyly had delivered to me from her secretary, four candies a week, right? This, this, because it's amazing. It's the best thing that I've ever been written. So four candies a week, that is a unit rate, which creates a proportional... Now, so, guys, th this is my job. This is my job. No amount of middle school griping will make me not do my job. Trust me. So, chill. Hey, hey, we could, like, open a textbook and, like, take notes, or I could relate this to the real world, and I promise you, this is more interesting. So... It is not Brenda's fault. It's 100% not Brenda's fault. So, what I want us to see is this. Guys, the longer you, longer you like, bellyache, the longer it is till I unpause. So I shouldn't see people looking at their computer screens because I have the activity pause. This is what we call a proportional relationship when we go through the origin. And this is what I was talking about with challenge one. If instead we start at a value that is not zero, so let's say maybe at like negative two, this is still a linear function or a linear relationship because it creates a straight line. 
but the thing we add or subtract on makes it not proportional. So as you're trying to solve these challenges, if we add or subtract a number that doesn't have an X, that moves my line up or down. And it kind of also moves it left or right, but what it technically does is moves it left or uh, up or down, and that then indirectly also moves it left or right, because if I move it up, it's gonna look like it moved to the left, right? But then if I wanna change the steepness of my line, that's that first number in front of the X. That's how we tweak that steepness. I will unpause you now. That's a complicated function. For slide six or challenge six? Uh, there's only five challenges. Who's asking? Connor's asking. So Connor, Connor made uh, some warp speed lines. Um. Guys, I, I got a secret to tell you though. What? Yeah, not not really a secret, but uh. An actor, a trickster. Most of you, wow, this looks super cool. Most of you are trying too hard. Most of you are doing like a guess check method where you keep kind of modifying and tweaking. There is a much more precise way to do this. Just saying, mine looks like kind of a logo triangle to me. Here, I'll unanonymize. Is it for this one, for challenge two? Because that's yeah. what I'm looking at first, is challenge two. Yours looks like a laser show, you're saying? I don't know, not really, but kind of. Wait. I think I'm at the bottom. Why are you at the bottom? Well, see, all the the one looks like it doesn't fit though. I know, all of them go through the origin not, except for the one. Not including that one, but if you think about it, yeah. all of them looks like a giant laser going across. Yeah, Grant's got a laser show with one laser out of place. Somebody messed up setting this laser up. And the last challenge that I want to give you guys. So now it's your choice. There is now also put the point on the line challenge. Ooh, 16 of you side with Mia, and only two of you side, one of you side with Mark. Anyone want to talk to me about why you're siding with Mia instead of Mark? Well, I should probably, I should really use random cards, I realize. Patrick, do you want to talk to us about why Mia's right? Oh, 
Oh, wait. Hold on, hold on. Because I hadn't... I get what... So this red line, you said, is going down. But this six... Oh, that six would go up because we'd be gaining every time, right? We'd be, like, adding more tiles. So the problem with this line for sure compared to the red line is the red line goes down. This would go up. It's a famous mathematician. But don't worry about it. It's just somebody who probably accidentally clicked mark without really thinking through it. It's anonymized. It's anonymized. the same thing on challenge three. A lot of you. What's funny is only four of you had unique ideas. But that, that shows that we're all starting to kind of think the same. Which in math is perfectly fine because thinking the same in math normally means we've arrived at the right conclusion. Uh, no. Uh, well, it depends on the activity if you'll see other people's responses. So I want to go ahead and talk about this, even though a couple students, literally a couple, are still looking at this. Most of us typed in y equals one and a half x plus four, and I'm wondering if, oh, Aharon, we miss you. Amelia, would you like to talk about why most people typed the same thing? Is there a reason we're all thinking the same? So I, I see the four also, but I don't know where the one and a half came from. What you put your pro Are you Amelia? Amelia, you're a really good ventriloquist. So if you want to keep talking, this is yours. Otherwise, you can pass it off to somebody else now to talk about the one point five. Sure, they, good ventriloquism. What do you mean it goes up 1.5 every time? What do you mean every time? What do you mean? I can look right here, and that doesn't go up one. Wait, maybe it does. Are these boxes one? Oh, each of these boxes are one. Hey, um, whoever is like just being silly. We get it. That's fine. Uh, you're not getting that much of a reaction, so whatever. <laughs> so right here, what I'm trying to get us to see is there's a formal way to determine this that we talked about in class. We nicknamed this the slope. Spencer, how do we find this? Yeah, how can we derive this 1.5? Like, what, what do we do in any situation? How can we derive the slope? It was something divided by something. Do you remember? Yeah, and we're talking about the M right now. The slope is the M. Lily? The change in Y? Yeah, I, I, yeah. Check it. Just look up here real fast, then I'll unpause it. The change in y point to point is 3. The change in x is 2. So guys, technically, what would have been nicer is to just write 3 over 2. Literally, you just put 3 over 2, that's it. Which is 1.5, but slope is better discussed as a fraction. It's not right versus wrong, but it's better to discuss slope as a fraction. Even like this... Now, this is a bit more complicated than it needs to be because we don't really need the over 1, 
but it tells you rise over run. It literally shows, like, now three over two would be better because decimals in fractions aren't necessarily nice, but, it, like, rise over run. All right, keep at it. Keep at it. Uh, I need to unanonymize. You know, we're, we're not like trying to be funny. That is not our objective here. Bet you one of them is off unless it doesn't like it. Agent of capacity with a chance in the wall after. Negative two, negative two, negative two, negative two. So then if we think about a rise and a run, if we think about the rise and run to get here, our rise is negative two and our run is one. So I do have one of them with a slope of negative two. Yep, that's good. From here to here, our rise is negative three, run is negative three. So actually, if we go the other way, it's three over three, and it's just positive. So you got positive x. Um, from here to there, rise is three, run is six. So three over six, that's where we're getting beat up now. What would three over six come out to be? Yeah. I don't, oh wait, there it is, okay, so one half, you got that one, so then this one, there, that was already there, ah, uh, so then it must be this one, let's double check that, rise from here to there is negative, negative five over four, what if we rewrite this, no, negative five over four, literally use that rise run thing. good i think you just hit next does it come up and tell you like success or does it just let you do it and then move on no it means that you can do something else like if you want to mess with it and like just do stuff over guys does challenge number four pop up and like tell you like good job great work or do you just like move on after it yeah so just hit next but we did fix that a tiny bit um it our number is not different it's just a better form does that make sense doesn't look like it. It looks like it's too far left. I mean, you look close. I'm not sure. Until I check math, I wouldn't be sure if it's 100% right. You guys know I can see what you're doing on my computer, right? <laughs> uh, you can work on homework if you want. Yeah. How are we already in our system is happening class? Yeah, isn't this fun? Uh, I mean, time time doesn't wait for anyone. Time is an independent variable. What? What? It is. Time is an independent variable. Most things depend on time, but time is an independent variable. You are. I love looking at the old eyes. Yeah, I already assigned you another one called Put the Point on the Line. You can either work on homework, go ahead and get a start on that, or go try that other activity. Guys, for stuff like this, I gotta anonymize. For stuff like this one, when you can't necessarily see the y-axis, like where it goes, that makes it sort of difficult. But you can still determine a rise and a run between any two points 
by drawing what we nicknamed the slope triangle. Right, so if we draw a triangle on there, why is original still showing you guys' lines? Ah, I don't know how to get to just one. Well, I, I do. I can just click on one of you guys. Oh, yeah. If you really like what you graphed, you can take a snapshot of it. I think that's an option on your guys' too. It might just be because I'm a teacher. I think you can take a snapshot. Well, when you're in your Desmos graphing, you can save your graphs. Like when you literally just go into your Desmos like graphing website. It's like here, guys, if you start playing in Desmos, make sure you're logged in and save your graphs. If you are logged in, not in an activity, not in what I assigned you, but if you log in and you create something cool, or if you're looking for graphs to be able to use, like check this out, I can look up how to make a spiral, right? Like we can look up all these different things. Now I also have saved some graphs like messing with absolute value. So that if you start trying to graph these, how can I graph these and what are the different ones? I can turn these on and off and compare them to each other. Right? This is how you can do discovery learning with Desmos to figure out what is going on. Well, they all look like this part is the same, but then what does that plus three on the inside do? Okay, interesting. It looks like it moved three to the left. Interesting. I'm not sure because, oh, like Desmos art? Yeah, you could totally do that. I mean, you could spend a long time doing the art stuff. Uh, let's all jump over to put the point on the line just to see the activity super fast. What do you mean? It won't let you out when I pause it? What? That's weird. So go back to like your student menu. I'm also trying to make sure we all know how to use Desmos as we move forward in this earlier. So I'm not sure. Go back to, I guess, back to all activities. Yeah. Go, go to, how did you get to that button? And then I hit start or put the point on the line. Uh, go ask Kevin or Kelly. They had it from our, our pumpkin activities. I just dumped all of my dog trash in the Columbus City School parking lot. So it's a laptop and papers and Because it ripped it. Because the trap broke. Oh my god. And I didn't zip it, so I caught the trash in the Oh jeez, dude. I'm sorry. That's alright. At least it's not like raining or anything. Well, there you go. So then, as we're trying to put the point on the line. Well, I was doing it with a pen. Yes, that would be a famous mathematician, as I've said already. I'm trying, actually. I'm really good at this stuff. Why is it so I'm on the line. <laughs> this starts to help us really, like, visualize that slope triangle. Right, because our slope triangle could have a point in between the points, could have a point extended from the points. The problem is that you guys can see like all of the different points happening, and it is kind of confusing when you see everything. Because even people that just started the activity are still trying to get their point where they want it. Most of our points look like they're ending up in the same spot, though. All right, so I will leave these unpaused through the weekend. And I see some of you are on mini golf, even though I asked you to switch activities. So that's fine. We'll pick it up next week.
It is now time for language arts as Brenda uh, just saying forget you and leaving is uh, obviously iterating. Math class time is over. Look, you're always welcome to make a poster whenever you want. I will always give you poster paper. But today I decided if people were excited about something I did, I'm going to ride that excitement. That'd be sweet. Here, we'll try to make a pizza and see how I can.